And it looks like we're back, folks, for the end of this heads up match. Justin with about a three to one chip deficit. 12 big blinds. This will be a pretty fast end of the match here. Yeah, the players are just running out of chips. We're going to see a lot more all ins. Uh, Justin's not going to have many many options other than getting his money in preflop in most of these hands uh, as the blinds do move up to 400,000, 800,000. And we'll see what can happen. That being said, it's still anyone's game. I mean, Justin doubles up and he's just right back in it, so. Yeah, certainly. Blinds are quite large now, though. What was the starting stack in this tournament? Fifty k. Uh, starting stacks were thirty thousand. Yeah, so they're they're anting, you know, much more than that. They're anting three, starting, three stacks. starting stacks. Yeah. Eric limps in the four three off with only Justin with only twelve big blinds. I'd imagine. Yeah, pretty clear shove here with AC. Here. Pretty clear shove. The limp fold is probably fine as well. I think it's like the bottom end of what you can limp fold, but it's yeah, four three is pretty rough there. Yeah, I think I'd let that one go. See the large pay jumps, pay jump they are playing for. Every single pot matters when you're this short here. These two players playing for over two hundred thousand dollars with just fourteen big blinds effective. It really is at this point going to come down to the cards that they're dealt. Well, there, you can have a decent amount of edge at, the, at this stack death for sure, but one you know one little cooler and it's all over like this right here. Justin with a pretty strong hand for heads up, but Eric with a uh, a premium. Yeah, so for I would big just ones, go ahead might and just shove. See an all in call here. Yeah, it looks like that's what Justin did. That's what's going on. Eric with Ace Jack, he hasn't called yet. And I think this is, sure you know, for. this is where, you know, we talk about experience uh, comes into play a little bit here. I think that, you know, us, we've we've all played, you know, thousands upon millions of hands heads up. Look at this Ace Jack and say, hey, th this is an easy call. He's got 12, 13 big blinds. Uh, you know, you, you're never folding. Ace Jack is a premium hand here. Let's go. Uh, but Eric needs a minute to think it over. This is this is very very surprising. I mean, I would call with the ace jack suited up to. I I, I wouldn't start to think about it until over twenty two twenty three big blinds. I, I, yeah, I mean uh, even more than that. I, I think that you're still not. Give me like forty. Yet. I'm in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did he did he not see his hand or something? What's going on here? He does All make the right, call. He makes I mean, call. I I I'd be a little annoyed if I see his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin is all in at risk. If Eric can hold with his ace jack, he will be the champion. Let's see the flop. Maybe he just won. Ace in the window. Well, ace king eight. It's going to be really tough Justin for does Justin have five Zaki to, to win here. Needs a queen or an eight. Turn card spade. Brit some chop outs out there. And a spade will now chop the pot. The queen of spades no longer out. Oh, oh the, the queen of diamonds. The queen, and Eric gets up in disbelief. Eric watching his second WP title just slip away with that card. Wow. And that is some emotion right there. Eric with his hands over his face. He cannot believe it. Justin has just doubled up, and he has regained the chip lead. That's insane. That just shows you how, you know, swingy that this short stack poker can be. One card away from the title. And like that, he's the short stack. Eric, visibly shaken by that river card there. Justin lives to see another day here. What a run out on that one. Best turn of the deck for Justin.
Justin back in the lead now for that hand, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just completely flip stacks. Yeah, about, about 30 to 20. Justin asking, what were you thinking about? <laughs> Let's see if Eric can overcome that beat or if that's going to shake his play at all. That's definitely the type of scenario that can can cause someone to kind of go fly off the hinges a little bit. I've seen many times in these heads-up scenarios where players just simply kind of lose it. But Eric's been here. You know, he's he's been to the winner's circle before, so I don't expect that from him, but we'll see. They're going to raise here with a 9-7. Pretty large raise here. A little more than 2.5x. He's been mixing Justin his... with an ace. This is kind of automatically a candidate for a shove now. Yeah, I would shove any ace on Eric here for sure. He does announce all in. Justin will. Be interesting to note his other card was, but it doesn't actually matter too much. Like you were saying, any ace seems yeah. more than good enough there. Justin will take it down, and it's been a good couple of hands for Justin since coming back from break here. As we discussed, when we're so short, I mean, fortunes are just going back and forth across this table so fast. In this short stack game of poker when they're playing for 200K. Eric still can't believe that river card. Stepping away from the table to regain his composure. You know, it's it's an unfortunate scenario after seeing the ace of spades in the window, but when all's said and done, you know, he, he's going to lose that pot pre-flop nearly 40% of the time. He was by no means a lock in that hand. Looks like they may be changing changing decks here. Did Eric request a deck change? <laughs> I'm not sure. That seems to be what's going on here. And I think is... I think uh, Zaki is needling him over it. Like, come on, bro. We've been playing this tournament for nine hours already, and now you're holding it up for a deck change. So just browns and yellows now. Yeah, the 25,000s have been colored up. Ones and fives, nice and simple. So Eric with the 9-7 offsuit again, Justin on the button with... Ace-2 suited, a very nice hand. We saw him earlier so with Eric's the Ace-4 16... suited just rip for 17 bigs. I imagine he'll probably do the same thing here with the Ace-2 suited for effective 16. He does have the chip lead here, so I think that... Does that make it any different? Well, I've seen players a little more inclined to just raise and try to maybe get their opponent to shove or maybe even just get their opponent to call and kind of play post-swap a bit. I, I'm not too sure there's a, a, a big difference, but I, I think that I've just seen it so much. I think mentally there's, you know, when you're the shorter one and the tournament's over if you lose the hand, you're mm -hmm. kind of feeling like, hey, you know, uh, I just want to put the money in, whereas when you have the chip lead, you're like kind of... Feeling more, you know, feeling good about yourself. You want to get your opponent in there, and you don't mind if he shoves a hand like, uh, you know, like this. Well, I think it should be the same. Wow. But this Speaking is an of the flop tournament here. being over, yeah, th this yeah, is. I, I don't see how the money doesn't go in. Eric's pretty short, and he makes uh, top I don't pair. Think he I think he's betting. 
Yeah, the money should just go in here for sure. And this is pretty close to a pure flip. Eric actually a slight underdog despite having the best hand. Yeah, Justin with an immense amount of outs. Straight draw, flush draw, Eric. and the overcard. Oh, it looks like Eric He's just, just makes call the here. call. That's a little surprising. Yeah, pretty surprising. I, I mean, it, to see it is a weaker in. top pair. Well, it seems like Eric in general is just less comfortable with short stack play. There it is. The king it's of spades on the turn is a great card for Justin, obviously. There's 9.6 million behind. The pot is 7 million. Is Eric contemplating a lead? Looks like he may be. Just is thinking, yes, do it. Yeah, this is a, such a nice spot to be in as Justin. You're just sitting there like, just please put chips in the pot. Whatever you do, just please put more chips in the pot. Eric does eventually check. Now Justin has to figure out whether he wants to bet, and if he does, how he wants to size it. If I were Justin, I'd be betting pretty small here. Yeah, I like small as well. Maybe 1.9 million. You could also just check and see if Eric wants to do some silly thing on the river with like a bottom pair type turn into a bluff sort of deal. Yeah, I wouldn't really anticipate that. I'll tell you guys, if I was playing Eric Tant here, I'd be out of this tournament. It'd be over. I'd have gotten that money in on the flop. And I'd oh, be walking yeah, certainly. away. The flop, the flop seems like the spot to get the money. And now he's in a pretty tough spot with no prospects for improvement out of position. Facing a river, but he will call the turn. So if we get a reasonably brick river here, we could see the end of the tournament. I think one of the issues with with this scenario for Eric is that there's not a ton of just totally blank rivers. I mean, even cards like an eight, seven, six, four, two, all complete different straight, very straight draws. Eric uh, just kind of saying with his countenance that he's kind of weak here. Justin moves all in, puts... Eric all in for his remaining 7.2 million here. We could see Eric decide to call just because he has so much invested and it is a run out where you'd expect Justin to bluff quite a bit. But he did flop top pair. I, I mean, top pair is a bad strong run out hand. I think that with Eric just calling the flop, he, he has to get away here. I, I mean, after the flush gets there on the turn, the ace gets there on the river, and he does let it go. Yeah, he does make the hold. Patience pays off for that one, and Eric, you know, like I said, uh, I would have definitely just gotten the money down on the flop and would have just run the equity versus that type of uh, draw. Right. Uh, I would not have won, but Eric lives to see another day. So there's definitely something that can be said for this, you know, kind of careful, calculated play here. The, pro the problem with that is when the board does run out offsuit queen, offsuit king, and, and Justin triple barrels. With the same hand. With the same yeah. hand, then you... That's not, not a good I think the other issue with, with this, you know, this style at this point is the blinds are so big that all, all these, you can't be that careful anymore. There's so much money in every pot that you have to just go after them. Um, and if you're just this cautious every single time, you, you will just find yourself, you know, whittled away at, chipped away slowly. Well, now Justin has more than a four to one chip advantage. Eric has nine big blinds and five deuce suited. I believe that this is a profitable call here. That's what he does. Yeah, I think it is. Justin checks. I think Justin's probably checking a little bit more in this spot than... Uh... Oh, well, we might have the rest of it in here. Chop two against the flush draw. Seems like we're just getting action flops now. Justin continues to flop well, Eric, with the flush draw, though. I can't imagine this is anything other than a uh, all in on the flop for both players, but we'll see. I said that about the last I, hand. If as I well. if I were Justin, I'd actually call here. Yeah, I'd, I don't mind calling here either. Your hand's just so strong. Oh, well, he raises up. Is that a min raise? Looks Eric's like Eric's gonna go with it. Eric goes all in. Justin makes a call. Eric will go. get the bad news, but he does have quite a few outs here. 
Obviously, any diamond. Yeah, as long as Eric's not seeing a higher flush draw, I mean, everything else is pretty much the same. If Justin can hold, he's slightly he worse off against we got a winner set. for Grover champion. But the there it is. The seven of diamonds. Justin is going to need a remaining 10 or 8 in order to win this tournament. And it is the nine of diamonds, so Eric will double up. Got there twice. A little bit of back and forth. Eric coming from behind after Justin came from behind the first time. And now the stacks are not quite even, but it's fairly close. Yeah, I mean it's still just this is this is still just anybody's game. Uh, I do think Justin has the edge at this point with the short stack play. He yeah, seems a little more resolved to just kind of getting the money in in spots, which usually tends to favor, uh, you know, the, the person that's a little more aggressive here. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're actually tanking Ace Jack suited in that other spot, you are probably going to be folding too much with the short stacks. Yeah. And not not Ray is getting in the nine seven on the nine high flop. Yeah. But also Justin yep. having a three to two chip advantage um, probably helps more than any skill advantage that exists in this match. Yeah, the chip advantage is very, very meaningful with the blinds like this. You're just you're getting it all in with pretty thin edges quite often, so having some more chips to be able to lose one of those hands if you need to is is nice. Justin with Jack seven looks like he's just going to limp in. Eric with nine four. Now, Mike, if or Brian, if you guys were at a final table, um, and you're a you're a professional, you get wow, look at this. Eric is raising up the nine four offsuit here, and it works. It'll work out for him. So if you're at the final table and you get heads up with a professional, let's say play starts kind of deep, and you're not really uh, thinking about a deal because uh, you're a professional, or I'm sorry, your head's up against amateur. You're a professional and, and you know, he, he's not an a he's an amateur poker player. But then as play goes on, you know, you get down to this thing where you get 20 big blinds effective. Are Might you now consider making some kind of deal because the variance is just through the roof? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, you know, this, this obviously depends on everyone's financial scenario as well as their mentality in these spots. Uh, there are plenty of you know, professionals and say, hey, I, I think I have an edge and I don't want to sacrifice any of that money. Um, with that being said, you know, it's, it's anybody's game. Uh, I, I will say seeing things like Eric Tank calling the ace jack makes me a little, would make me a little less likely to, you know, want to want to give up some money here. But yeah, certainly like I, I'd be in the camp of uh, I'll, I'll talk deal if he's willing to give me something extra. But I do think I would have an edge at this stacked up. Uh, having studied, you know, the, the all in the like the ranges for the stacked up, you know, if you've just done a decent amount of studying for them, you are actually going to have a surprisingly large edge against someone who hasn't. So, so it, even though it is going to be very high variance, uh, you, there, there is, I think the edges in this sort of spot are a bit underestimated. But you're more likely to make a deal when both of you have 20 big blinds and if both of you had 80 big blinds, for example. For right? sure. Yeah, with 80, with 80, yeah, it would not be likely at all. Right. And of course, if maybe if you got down to four big blinds, now you can talk deal. Yeah. <laughs> So both players have a pretty good hand here. Justin with a pair, bottom pair, and a gut shot. Eric with a weak top pair. Here come the small bets from Eric. I'm going to see Justin call this one. But there's a king. The Justin king. gets there. That is going to slow the action down a lot, though. Yeah, with a four card straight out there, it's going to be tough for these players to put too much money in. Eric Bite my tongue as Eric puts a bet out there. Another small <laughs> one. Yeah, I assume Justin has to call this. I mean, he's got two pair. We we've seen Eric make these bets with much weaker hands than you know than straights in the past. Justin will make the call. So Eric needs to hit a queen or a 10 for a chop. 
Oh my and goodness. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The problem here is that it's really even hard for Eric to, to value bet. Well, he's going to try. He's going to try small sizing again. Now, this is one I could see Justin getting away from. Especially because even this small sizing is actually quite a lot of chips at this stage of the tournament. And a good fold by Justin there. Eric getting very lucky to pick that pot up. You can see the massive swing in chips just from that one pot. Eric back in the lead now. Both players right around 20 big blinds. grueling heads-up match for these two players. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Sometimes they go really quickly, too. I was doing the uh, Berlin final table a couple weeks ago, and Ole Shemion won the heads-up match very fast. The stacks were really deep. I think there was 100 and something big lines between both players' heads-up, and he, he won you know within the first 30 minutes or so. But th then sometimes there, you get a match like this where it just goes on and on until the blinds just really force the action. Well, if you just get two big hands that clash, I mean, the tournament's just over always. You know, you, you see something like you know two reasonable pocket pairs pre-flop. You know, you see an ace-king versus a pocket jacks or something like that, and you're just all the money's going in. Um, we really haven't seen that. We've seen a lot more just bad hands being dealt, a lot of 9-4 offs and queen 3 offs and stuff, and and not a lot of really big post-flop coolers either. Uh, all the coolers that we've been talking about have been very, you know, bottom pair versus third pair, or bottom pair versus second pair, and, you know, uh, weak third pair versus okay third pair type hands um, with one player getting the, getting the better, but they've been very small pots for the most part. I mean, here, here's a good example. Probably another small pot yeah. here. Like, yeah, sure, they, they both kind of, you know, there's some action here, but there's a big difference between this type of action and, you know, one player having, uh, you know, king, queen, and they're having two aces. Eric is going to get max value in this spot, possibly, depending on if Justin manages to get away. Pretty small check raise. Oh, it's a very small bet, too. It's uh, uh, weird that he just chose to check raise here. This is not a hand that I would expect a check raise from. I mean, it does need to protect a little get a bit against all the overcards to the six, but he, he is a uh, he has chosen the perfect hand to target for value for Justin here, Ace three. Right, I'm I'm very very surprised he check raised there. It, it worked out. Um, could have worked out better if he got a call, but he at least protected his equity, takes down the pot. That's part of Eric's strength at these final tables is like. He doesn't necessarily have the same fundamentals as a professional who studies all these spots would, but he mixes enough different hands into all of his ranges that it's actually really difficult to uh, pin him down in a lot of spots. He, he can just show up with like anything at any time. Yeah, that can be very frustrating to play against. I I have a much easier time playing against people who are consistent, even if they're better players sometimes. You know, maybe a, a traditionally classic better player that's just, you know, tougher. Um, but it can almost be easier in a way because you kind of have an idea of what they're doing. Whereas uh, against a player like Eric, I just feel like I'm constantly guessing when, when I'm in pots versus, versus someone like him. Um, it, it may not, he may not be doing things that are, again, traditionally correct in all scenarios, but he's doing things that are really tough to play against. Um, and especially at these short stack depths, like, it's, it's very frustrating. You can make yourself feel like a fool too, you know, like you see, we saw Justin calling those small bets over and over and over and, you know, just, just constantly being shown slightly better hands, um, you know, versus a, a better opponent 
who who is maybe you know betting larger, you know, fifty to seventy five percent pot, just would have had some easier folds in some of those hands. Uh, so it can make you really feel just frustrated, just keeping keep putting money in and keep getting shown better hands. Yeah, certainly. So Eric, a big favor here. Justin with nothing will fold. And it is rare for a heads up match to last this long when uh, such a high percentage of the time a player has under 20 big blinds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, both of these players are not playing a very high variance style, though you're not seeing a lot of open shoves. I think that. Yeah, you, you saw Eric check back there with an ace in his hand, which is pretty. Uh unorthodox yeah, I, mean, I, I, would, just I would be shoving be there doing that yeah I, I think it's common you know with players that don't play a lot of heads up though uh as they're looking for hands oh, yeah, that definitely. they deem good quality hands to get all in rather than hands that you know necessarily are good quality for the scenario it's not necessarily intuitive just how wide the ranges can be heads up for sure So raise and call here. And that is a bad flop for both players, I guess. Justin picks up a gut shot, but he can't be very happy about it. Eric is going to see bet here. And that's good enough. So Eric again moving into a commanding lead over 2-1. to one. Yeah, Justin getting pretty short now. It all it takes is folding, in, you know, a couple of spots pre-flop and like one or two spots post-flop and suddenly you're in big trouble. Almost 40 million chips in play. And both players here with a 10x offsuit hand. Limp and check. So both players have a straight draw. Justin has the better hand technically, but Eric with a open-ended straight draw. Eric quickly calls a flop bet. I think I'd like to see a little bit of aggression out of Eric in these scenarios. It, it can just do well, especially again at short stack depths. Uh, you just deny a lot, a lot of equity from Justin again if Justin has. You know, think if Justin has a hand like Jack Eight, for example, that's just gonna fold. Um, whereas now, like, what are you gonna do? Are we gonna bluff? Are we gonna let him show down? Looks like he is gonna bluff. Nope. And uh, Justin might just check back and win with ten seven high. Yeah, here. if he checks, he will win. I mean, he should probably bluff. Yeah, I, I think if. If you're going to play your hand this way once you make it to the river, um, it's just one of the worst hands you're possibly going to have going to the river, and you should absolutely put out a bluff there. I mean, I think that this is a good example of why being aggressive on the flop is Eric is, is good, because you just, you know, you don't let Justin bluff you in this type of scenario. You force Justin on the flop to either commit to his hand or let it go. Yeah, agreed. Definitely. And then folding and showing the six on the river is actually giving Justin quite a bit of information about the way he's structuring his flop ranges, like knowing that he's not check raising with the six there, I think does give Justin quite a bit of info. Do you think that Eric would be more likely to bluff if they were deeper stacked? Perhaps right now he feels like he has an advantage. He has Justin on the ropes. He doesn't want to do anything to give Justin any more chips. Yeah, I think absolutely. I don't think that you see big bluffs for all of someone's stack kind of regardless of how deep they are um you know you see a lot of times when players will bluff and bet like 10 big blinds on the river but if a player only has 10 big blinds left you just see it a lot less and i think that could be an in error um to the extent that the other player may be more likely to fold if he's uh needs to call for his tournament life yeah absolutely Justin with a nine here. Eric 
And we might be due for yet another blind increase here before too long. If these players are going to be forced all in soon. Three on the turn. There's going to check check a lot here and then another three on the river. Are you value betting if you're Justin, Justin here? I don't think so. Pretty much only getting value from ace high. So I think playing the nine as a bluff catcher makes a little bit more sense. Not that Eric's going to bluff that spot very often. Yeah, I may just go for it. Just because. I mean, you can you can have some bluffs that reach the river, so it's it's certainly reasonable to uh, try to value bet the nine there. You could have like well, the flop was like king nine three, so you could have like jack ten, stuff like that. Blinds up, there it is. You got that clock. You got that clock spot on there. Uh, Five hundred yeah, thousand years and years of one experience, million. <laughs> the one thousand thousand. Big blind. Casual uh, 33 starting stacks in the big one. Is this the longest a uh, WPT has gone here at the Borgata? Does anyone anyone know offhand? I can't imagine. Do, that do it you is. remember? Do you remember what the blinds were when you got second? Did you play mil uh, one million big blind? No. No. So this is probably the longest. Well, I don't know. There have been other ones. Yeah, but that was one of the bigger ones. That's true. Yeah, that would be some interesting information to find out. And this can happen heads up. I mean, even even with the stacks being short, it does it does take a hand and another hand. And we actually have had a couple of post flop spots where they were basically flipping an equity, but you know, one of them, Eric, decided to just check call to the river and then fold the river rather than get it in on the flop. And the other one, he hit with his flush draw against the top two pair of Justin. So Sometimes the cards just dictate a long match. We're seeing a raise here from Eric with Jack-10. Justin with 4-3. I think this one is a fold. He chooses some interesting cards to show, that's for sure. <laughs> A random 10, a random 6. Yeah, he's giving away a lot less by showing a 10 pre-flop than he is by showing a 6 on the river with the 3, 4, 5 flop. Absolutely. Though. It's kind of funny to see Chip Leader 23 big blinds after this entire final table. Everyone was so deep yep. stacked. Zach Grunberg had 17 million, which was, you know, had a big blind... Yeah, he had over 100 000. for a lot. Yeah, of he had 150 table. big blinds. I would not hate to see Justin start shoving a lot more hands pre. Um, it seems that, again, Eric is getting the better of him in a lot of these small pots. And Eric does seem to, you know, be less comfortable facing all ins. So I just make him face all ins more often. It's very hard to have, you know, a very small amount of equity pre flop. Uh, when you get it all in, heads up. So I, I would just be shoving a lot of hands versus him. I think I, I agree in spots where Eric either limps or opens. I think as far as open jamming, it might be a little bit too. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, with that particular hand, it might have been a little too much. But yeah, generally speaking, I think you, you want to identify the place where your opponent is weak and then put them in that situation over and over again. Yeah, I mean, just for what we've seen, like the limping, it hasn't been working for Justin. He, Eric is starting to pounce on it, and he's also been winning the check check pots a lot. So. Eric raising with the 8-6 offsuit here. So, yeah, this would be an interesting example of a hand Justin could just shove, knowing how aggressive Eric has been raising. Yeah, exactly. Calls. I mean, you this might category even get some... hand plays pretty well as a shove, too. Yeah, you might get, you might even get some, like, decent hands to fold. Some, like, king highs. Yeah, and... I mean, it, and if you get called by something like ace-10 offsuit, you're over 40%, which is fine. I mean, we saw how he tanked that ace-jack. He, he may not even, you know, necessarily call some, some weaker aces. Because it does represent half of his chips. Yeah, if Eric's opening like pretty wide and he's only calling with you know the top 
ten percent or whatever. This is a very very profitable shove for Justin Pre. Justin County out his chips. Like Justin is going to be weighing his raising options. here. I would yeah, I, I imagine there's no play other than him going all in or raise call. Yeah, in. There it is. Now Eric has to decide whether he wants to call off with bottom pair. He's asking for a count. Justin, Justin is less likely to have an ace here because he didn't shove pre. But it's very difficult to call with bottom pair here. This is one of the better hands that Eric can be up against, and you see that he's only 50%. It's a very tough call. Yeah, one of the better, one of the better hands on for Eric. Overs. One of the better hands for Eric, yeah. Providing that, you know, Justin's yeah, not I mean, running any suicide good. bluffs here. Yeah, Justin definitely not going to show up with like five, four clubs here. He's going he's to have some sort of a solid piece of equity to do this. So Eric's upside is being a coin flip and his downside is being completely smashed. It seems like a tough spot. He agrees, he and he lets it go. Fold. So Justin's uh, call pays off there, but yeah, I, I'm on board with your plan of shoving more pre. We've been in a long haul here, heads up, but I don't know, part of me that wants to see how long these guys can go for. <laughs> you know, I would see some 1 million, 2 million with uh, 12 big blinds each. Yeah, I'm I'm six hours ahead of you, buddy. Let's not go that. Let's not go crazy here. What time is it over there in Holland? Five a.m. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sticking it out with you guys here. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. I'm pretty used to the long grinds from uh, Twitch. So like, whenever I make a deep run in an online tournament, it'll frequently go around this time. So it's not completely foreign to me. Eric with a monster flop here, and Justin's actually not even drawing live to his gut shot. Yeah, seven would 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 mean the tournament's over, I think. If Justin were to make a straight here, but let's see how Eric plays it. He's gonna raise, which I think is pretty reasonable on a texture like this, but it's not gonna work this time. Do you show the nine or the seven? I show the nine. Okay. I That's think it was I thought. So for anybody who's just now tuning in, we're at the final table of the Borgata Winter Open. These two players are playing for six hundred thirty seven thousand dollars plus a seat to the fifteen thousand dollar tournament of champions. Second place in this tournament is 434,000. It started with 1,244 entries. And to everybody who's been watching from the very beginning of this final table, my hat's off to you. It has been a <laughs> uh, long final table and specifically a long heads-up match here between these two players, both of them battling it out. Justin Zaki is attempting to win his first WPT title, whereas Eric... Afriad already has a WPT title. He's he's trying to get his diamond on that trophy. Yeah, Justin seeming to uh, some debate of where the button is, and <laughs> Justin is correct. Well, he's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that would be an important uh, important thing to get right at, at this blind. Level. Well, they're putting in nearly ten percent of their That's stack under the... the big blind, so I I don't even I'd know how there was attention. debate about that. Yeah. That's just a 17 starting stack difference between the big one and the small one. No big deal. We get a limp from Justin with the 9-8. Eric will check the jack three. Open ender. Eric with nothing but an overcard. Those are not folding chips. Wow. They are not. Eric well, raising up again. Eric's trying to do something here. Now, will we see Justin just flat here? Or do you think we're going to see him come back over the top? If he has the way the, Eric's playing, it's got to be tempting to shove. But yeah, you can if do he has the really news position. that Eric is raising, you know, the second pair or possibly third pair, I, I think it's a pretty easy shove. 
without that information. Yeah, given that Eric Checker is a 6'5", that other hand, I think shoving makes sense for sure. Wow, Justin does, does move shove. all in. Yeah, I like, I like this the best shove bit, here but, uh, from Justin. It would be a very heroic call. <laughs> so Eric, obviously going to fold, just posturing a little bit here. Not sure what the point of uh, fake tanking there is if you're going to be showing your opponent one whole card every other hand anyway. Now Zaki back on top. Very slightly. Eric with ace king, but Justin with only king eight. So unless you see a king on the flop, I don't think this will be the uh, the final hand. Although given how wide Eric's been raising, king eight would not be the worst candidate for a shove here. I mean, shoving king eight has to be profitable against Eric's ranges. Sure, but is it more profitable than defending? Uh, yeah, that that I'm not sure of. Oh, looks like he announced it. Wow. Oh, wow. Justin Zaki does go all in. Eric quickly makes Eric a call. Slams the ace king. Once Justin Zaki is Justin a three stabbing. to one so underdog here. There's so many spots for Justin where this would have just got a fold and he would have picked up, you know, five million or whatever, but he runs into it this time. And this I mean, this is it. There's thirty seven million to play. This is for all the chips. This is it. Flop. This one's Deuce actually three seven. Tournament, I think. Justin, Justin is going to need an eight. Left if he, if he doesn't hit. The turn card's a oh, nine. It's a seven and a nine. All the similar cards. Justin, Eric's got to fade Justin the river this time. For an eight, and it is a king. a king. Eric will win the pot, and now Justin only has a couple of big blinds left. Massive, massive pot for Eric. The moment yeah, Justin going with the strategy of uh, shoving a bit more pre did not work out for him that time. Though. Yeah, I think just unfortunate timing for, for Justin. We, we, we kept saying over and over, I, I said I would have liked to see more shoving, and I think that that's, uh, that's the type of situation. I don't know if I would have picked King 8, but those are the spots you look for. You mentioned it yourself. Uh, just really unfortunate. Yeah, Mike, what do you think about shoving King 8 there versus I, uh, calling? I probably would have just called. Um, I would have preferred to have hands that – you know, maybe are a little little rougher in flop equity. King eight's a, a pretty playable hand. You always have king high. You know, and eights eights and kings are relatively high cards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd like to see more of those kind of eight seven suiteds or you know maybe some of those offsuit aces that we saw some calls from. Um, I, I'd like to see some of those get put in there. Right. But Eric Afriet, who was earlier one card away from this title, now finds himself with ninety five percent of the chips in play. Justin with only two big blinds. The thing about shoving there is you could see Eric tank folding a hand like uh, Ace-7 or maybe even like Ace-9, and that's oh, what I think. And if he's doing that, then shoving is just absolutely printing money. Yeah, I, I guess after watching him tank forever with the Ace-Jack suited, it makes it a better shove there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's certainly, certainly. And here... Oh, uh, he's going to have to go with this, I Justin, think. Yeah, going to have to go with every hand he's dealt, I believe, in this spot. Uh, this hand is certainly good two enough. Two big blinds. I think you can start to fold up to three. I think not you can two. probably fold maybe like a couple of the absolute worst here. Yeah, you could fold like the bottom. Yeah, like two percent high or something. Four high yeah. and stuff like that. But Eric with the king two, if he can hold here, will be the winner poker op open champion. But there's a nah, five just, on the flop. He's gonna make a full comeback. Watch. He's gonna make the full comeback. Eric is going to need a king or running spades here. Eric, uh... Turn cards a deuce. That gives him a couple more outs. To finish this. Eric needs a king or a deuce on the river for this tournament to be over. It oh, is a it deuce! is a deuce! 
And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Afriot has won. He will take home $637,000. Plus, he will have the entry, the $15,000 entry to the Tournament of Champions. Justin Zaki goes home with $434,000 and change in second place. And look at that. I mean, man, what a match. Eric just taking his time to... You know, really regain his composure after that long, grueling heads-up match. And my hat's off to everybody in, in uh, the internet land who stuck around to watch the entire final table from start to finish. Uh, there we can see our second-place finisher, the 33-year-old Justin Zaki from Tampa, Florida, going home uh, a lot a lot richer than he, than he came out here to the Northeast. Still hurts getting that close. He's come so close so many times, and, and this is this is the closest he's come, and uh, especially after a heads-up, back-and-forth match like that. But uh, hats off to Eric Afriot. Really well fought the entire way. He really mixed it up the whole way along the final table. Never backed down, even when he did get sucked out on for the title.